Orda, good morning and welcome to this hybrid meeting of Planning Committee on Tuesday the 12th of September 2023. I am Councillor Jeff Jones and I will be chairing this meeting of Planning Committee. Just to make you all aware, today's meeting will be recorded. Can I also welcome any members of the public and press to today's meeting? Can I kindly ask you to observe the meeting only and not to speak or participate? Registered speakers will be brought in at the appropriate time. Please ensure that your phones are switched to silent for the duration of the meeting. Members, if you wish to speak or ask a question, please raise your electronic hand on Teams or physical hand in person. I will now move on to agenda item one, Chair's announcements. I can confirm I have no announcements to make. Agenda item two, is declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest? I see no indication, Chair. Thank you, Chloe. There are two sets of minutes attached to for approval today. First, the minutes from the 1st of August 2023. Does any member have any comments to make on the accuracy of these minutes? No. Oh. Please, can I have a proposal and seconder to approve the minutes? Thank you, Councillor okay, Hudson. Seconder? Second. I'll, I'll, I'll second. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can confirm those minutes have been approved. The minutes from the 22nd of August 2023. Does any member have any comments to make on the accuracy of these minutes? Oh, please, can I have a proposer and seconder to approve the minutes? I'll propose. Thank you. Um, who's that? Sorry. So proposed by Councillor Patterson and seconded by Councillor Heath Davis. So I confirm those minutes have been approved. Thank you. Yeah. Agenda item four is, re is request for site visits. Are there any members wishing to suggest a site visit? on the applications presented today or for any other matter. I see no indication, Chair. Well, please also let me know if you wish to call for a site visit at any point in the meeting. Now we move on to section A of the agenda, which is matters for decision. Agenda item five. The application we will look at today is application number P2023-0461 65 quotes at. The report is set out on pages 11 to 30, and this application is recommended for approval. I would now like to ask the, ask the planning officers to take us through the report. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is uh, application P2023-0461. It's for a change of use of a residential dwelling, use class C3, to a house of multiple occupancy, use class C4. Uh, for a maximum of six residents. Uh, the application uh, site is, is located uh, just off end of Terrace, located on Coach Sart, and as you see, you've got Tucker Street and Short Street either side of this terrace, and you can see the rear lane there at the back of the properties. This is the uh, air Hang on, it's catching up. This is the uh, aerial photo of the site. So you can see it's a predominantly residential area with some commercial properties at the far end of Short Street, uh, with the railway running obviously at the back there. Um, but traditional form of um, terrace properties, as you see uh, everywhere in the area. Here we've got uh, the existing and proposed ground floor plans. The, the uh, existing plan is on the left, the proposed plan to the right. It shows that there will be um, two bedrooms on the ground floor and shared accommodation. And you will see the um, off street car parking as proposed for the property located at the rear. Again, existing and proposed floor plans. You'll see the indication of uh, the additional four bedrooms at first floor. There are no external alterations to the property. Um, apart from the lean-to at the rear, going to be used as a bike store. This is the plan that we've taken out of the report that you've already seen. This indicates the application property there in red, 
and uh, as we've assessed the application within the report you'll see that we've we've looked at the um the distances from other hmos in the property that we've um, used from guidance that swansea have put together in a supplementary planning guidance you will see the other hmo properties in the area indicated in blue but obviously the one that's within the zone that would be um, affected by this property um, is indicated within that um, black circle so there's only one additional property so this is the the terrace uh, looking north on the, the frontage uh, looking south with the junction of short street and you'll see in the foreground the um, the bus stop this is Short Street, so one of the um, the roads coming off Kurtzart uh, itself. And you will see from these photos, there's obviously very, uh, there's no um, traffic regulation orders apart from junction protection through the double O lines that you'll see in the corner of that photograph. This is the rear lane, off which the single car parking space will be served. Again, this is Tucker Street on the other side, and you will see there's obviously no traffic regulation orders on that street either. That's the rear of the property from the lane. And the, these obviously the front elevations here is traditional two story property. So the, the, the main issues um, in this case, obviously the application has been brought to committee at the request of Councillor Chris James um, from concerns of local residents about um, parking and highway safety. You will see in our assessment of the application that we've um, we've clarified that there are no specific policies in the local development plan that relate to HMO development. Uh, however, we have used um, similar contexts that Swansea have undertaken um, to assess the application. And in relation to that, it would still be in compliance with those policies where we have to have a similar position. In relation to car parking, um, which we've obviously received um, a number of concerns from residents on. This is a res the existing property is a residential property, three bedroom. The maximum number of off street car parking spaces that could be provided is three. Currently, it has no car no off street car parking. This HMO would again be classed as a residential property. Again, would require a maximum of three. The applicant is proposing to provide one off street car parking off the rear lane. So there's a betterment of one additional car parking space. You will see that highways have offered no objection to the application. Um, as you see, we've received a number of objections from residents. Some of these relate to um, issues of amenity and noise. We've received um, no objections from our statutory consultees um, in relation to these issues. Um, whilst we are obviously um, aware that some um, HMO uses can be transient in nature in terms of the occupancy. Um, this is a, um, a type of residential accommodation that is needed in Neath Port Albert and does um, and, and is, is classed as no different than any other residential use in terms of the impacts that it would have. So our recommendation here is a recommendation of approval, which is set out on page 28 and the conditions then uh, all the way through to page 31 of uh, the report in front of you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chris. We have one registered speaker for this item. You will have five minutes to address the committee. Democratic Services will be timing you and will let you know when you have one minute remaining and then when your time has ended. Can I please call on Mr. Gareth John to address the committee? Mr. John, I'm just going to get the timer up on my um, laptop, so just let me know when you would like me to press start. OK, I've just unmuted. I'm going to read from my notes. If anybody got any access needs, I'm happy to provide these afterwards. So I'm just going to start now. Is that OK? OK, I'll press start now. OK, so uh, th first of all, thanks very much, Chair and, and committee members for giving us the opportunity to speak here today. As, as, you, as the Chair just said, my name is Gareth. Um, I live a couple of doors away from uh, number 65 and I'm here to speak on behalf of some fellow neighbours and residents um, to object to the change to um, an HMO. You've already seen um, that Coatsart is part of the main road through Britain Ferry. 
Um, as such, there is a chronic shortage of residential parking for us with on street parking only available on one side of the road. Um, parking is in such short supply. I don't know when those pictures were taken, by the way, because it's never like that around here. It must be in the early morning or late in the evening. Uh, well, not late in the evening, early morning. Parking is in such short supply that some residents have on occasions taken to parking on the pavement on the opposite side of the road to us. Uh, recently, the South West Police issued letters to residents warning us against parking on the pavement, which, which further reduced the availability of parking. In fact, some elderly residents uh, further down the road have even dug out their front gardens to create space for parking. If you look at the pictures, you might even see that. On a personal note, uh, my partner is a care support worker who works shifts. She often struggles to find parking near her house late in the evening when she returns home from work. This is a constant worry and presents a risk to our safety, especially as there have been 37 reported crimes in our small community, of course, aren't in the past year. And in fact, nine of those were for violence and sex crimes. Okay. Um, adding an HMO with up to six residents will only increase our anxiety and the risks to her and other residents um, late in the evening. Due to the limited availability, residents have also also have to try to find parking on the two side streets, um, which you've just seen pictures of. I think you've seen pictures of Short Street. Um, they attack a street in Short Street. Short Street is the nearest to number 65. Uh, we've there's been previously been disputes between neighbours resulting from residents of those streets leaving notes on our cars asking us not to park in what they consider to be their streets. Uh, the addition of a small single uh, parking space at the rear of 65 in the revised proposal is not going to alleviate the severe parking congestion. Access is through the narrow rear lane with the nearest entrance to the rear lane for number 65 via Short Street, potentially leading to increased congestion there. Um, I measured the width of the lane at that entrance. It's approximately nine feet and um, agree with the residents uh, that I canvass that we are doubtful that there's sufficient room or turning circle to safely drive a car in and out. In fact, others have tried and given up in the past. Um, the entrances to the lane are also dropping off points for waste collection and recycling. They are regularly blocked by people putting out their waste and recycling until they're collected, which can often be when people return from work. Um, in fact, we, we actually laughed when we saw that proposal, to, to be told. As a consequence, there's a risk of having up to six new residents, all of whom and their visitors may require parking, will add to the competition for parking spaces and likely lead to tension and disputes between neighbours, that's without deliveries and other people calling. Um, as you just heard, Cotsart's, um, uh, consists overwhelmingly of residential and family properties and also has a new and thriving primary school, Askel Karakir. We're located close to Askel Karakir and are on the main road school run. As a result, Cotsart can get very congested at times, especially as it is also on the main road between Neath and Baglen and the gateway to the M4. An HMO is likely to introduce new and transient population um, up to six new residents with an increase in footfall, noise, disruption due to the comings and goings of residents and their visitors. It's likely to be transient to six single rooms. There's only two bathrooms. Uh, one minute I live remaining. In a, I live in a similar house and um, I can tell you it's going to be very pressured in there and very cramped. Uh, combined with the pressure on the competition for parking, this will inevitably lead to a breakdown in local social and community cohesion. This is directly at odds with the wellbeing goals set out by Welsh Government in the Future Generations and Wellbeing Act. Um, as an aside, work has already begun on the change of use last week at number 65. As a consequence, it feels like the owner and developer has already been given the green light to proceed. Um, their presence has already added to the parking congestion. They were politely asked to move yesterday because somebody couldn't get access to their property. They didn't like that. There's music playing outside my window, which is being filtered, filtered out at the moment. A similar application was turned down a few years ago at the end of our block because of the parking problems. And we sincerely hope that you listen to our concerns and not approve this application for change. Um, and thanks again for listening. Thank you, Mr. John. I will now ask the local ward member if they wish to come in at this point. Councillor Chris James. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you for allowing us to come to committee. So, Mr. John's covered a lot of the issues we got there. The parking is horrendous in that area. I'm constantly getting phone calls. Can we get residents parking? Because people think residents parking will solve the problems, but 
Unfortunately, it doesn't. It's just too many cars, not enough spaces. So as those problems exist in problems, and I know planning isn't there to solve existing problems, this plan application. But what it is there to make sure things don't get worse. And it, so a three bedroom house realistically will have two adults, possibly two children, so the maximum of four cars. Six bedroom HMO could possibly have six cars. There. This the one parking space they've added, I don't think is a realistic parking space. The issue is the lane, getting in out of the lane plus waste day, that's blocked. Because of the issues we got here with parking in this area, we've already had one application turned down approximately five years ago. So that it has been there's a precedent set. The the HMOs can't exist in this area. I mean, I'm I'm forever bringing HMOs the planning committee. Britain Ferry is an area. We've got more than a fair share of HMOs and it, it is changing the nature of my town. I love my town of Britain Ferry. And you bring in HMO applications, you do get a transient population. I know we can't assume that in planning, but it does really make a difference to the town. And over the, the time I've been a councillor, I've seen a change because of different kinds of HMOs appearing in the ferry. So I would ask the members of the committee to really think about how this will affect the residents, how they affect their well-being, the issues of parking that I've mentioned, and also the issues of a HMO. Thank you, Chair. I'm good, Councillor James. Well, I will now take questions from the members of the committee. Members, do you have any questions to ask the officers? Councillor Tim Bowen. Yeah, thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you for the member coming in. Um, I asked a question yesterday about, um, about um, bins and so forth. Um, they come back that bins are collected from the back lane. Um, I think that's going to be a major problem with that one parking space. And the second question they need to ask is, has anybody else ever applied for um, planning for parking on that back lane? Uh, Chris. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, what I'll try and do is I'll I'll try and answer your questions first, Councillor Bowen, and then if you don't mind, I I'll then um comment on obviously the the local member and the member of the public's comments as well, because I think it's probably worth me just mentioning that. Um, in relation to the refuse, as as we checked, currently, um, refuse is brought out to the rear lane on collection day, and then and then the um, vehicles go down the side streets, and then the off the operatives go down the lane and pull the bins down. So you are correct; they do go, they do use the rear lane for refuse. Um, planning permission isn't required um, to create an off-street car parking space off that lane because it's not um, a classified highway. So you wouldn't, we wouldn't have any records of anyone applying because it doesn't actually require planning permission. So whilst the applicants have shown that parking space, and I think it's obviously to address some of the concerns that have been brought forward, um, and we've conditioned it that they have to, they have to put it in place, so it has to be retained. Um, that element of the scheme doesn't actually require planning permission. Obviously, they okay, they will you. be, they will they will be aware of that situation, and obviously as 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 you know, no doubt. Resident, as as um, Mr. John explained, on days when the refuse um, is in in the lane, it would be difficult for them to get in and out of it. But obviously, that would be for them to deal with as an issue for themselves. But it it doesn't actually require planning permission. But we are requiring it be put in under the planning application as a condition. Okay, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chair. Um, and um, just to go back to obviously the points that were raised um, by Mr. John and uh, Councillor James. Um, in terms of parking pressure, as I stated, the property currently requires three car parking spaces and currently the car parking guidance that's been adopted by the authority would only require a maximum of three car parking spaces for this property as well. So in terms of the difference in terms of intensity that we would be able to put forward under our existing policies, it's it's a similar kind of assessment. So in terms of what we've got under this application, it's what called to be a betterment because there's one additional car parking space compared to what's there currently. Um, 
I note the comments you you made in relation to parking pressure. Obviously, there's lots of areas that have um, parking pressure. I'm unclear if, um, councillor, you've you've put forward for a residence parking to be put forward in this area. But I've been speaking to the um, parking section, as you'll note from the report, they're about to review their parking um, procedures in terms of permits. And one of the things that they are going to be looking at is these more intensive uses and how they deal with these if they were put forward in an area where they were going to put residence parking. So I would suggest that you, you contact um, the parking section to, um, to make sure that you're aware of when they go out for that review to raise your concerns. But obviously, parking per, uh, residence parking only gives you a permit to park on the street where your property fronts. So again, that would address some of the issues raised by Mr. John. You would only be able to park on your frontage. The people of fronting Short Street, if there was residence parking there, would be able to park there. But your permit would only permit you to park on Kurtzart. But obviously all that does is allow you to park. It doesn't guarantee a space. So it's still an issue for most areas because it is on a first come, first serve basis. Um, in terms of the scale of accommodation, obviously we've um, we've we've assessed the application in terms of the use and what they're providing in there. But our colleagues in environmental health also look at these types of development and they look at uh, their man building control, look at things like fire safety. So in terms of the, the scale of accommodation and the, the size of it compared to the number of residents, uh, we've received no concerns from them on that side. Um, and the final point that I was going to raise. Um, as you've stated, um, Mr. John, the social cohesion issue. Um, that's what we've done in terms of the policy that's been put in place and the guidelines that Swansea use specifically to address the issues in terms of social cohesion. And we've we've used their adopted assessment of how they look at that in terms of percentages of numbers of different types of uses within residential areas. And as you can see there on the bottom of page 21, um, there are only two known HMOs within the zone. Number six, they would be number 65 and 75. And whilst there is another one approximately 134 metres away, um, what this would result in is only 13.3% of properties being HMOs, which is two out of 15 within the 15, 50 metre zone. Now that is obviously using um, guidelines and policy from another authority. Um, but it gives you a good assessment of what an inspector and people have agreed is a, is, a, is a reasonable level to ensure that social cohesion is not um, affected. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Councillor Bowen. Yes, I've, I've had my question. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Bowen. Uh, Councillor Nathan Gold up, John. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chris, for um, the presentation. Just two questions from me. What's the minimum space standards for a bedroom in a HMO dwelling in Neath Talbot, and what are the applicants proposing? And second question, just with regards to cycle storage, I know you said it's going to be in the lean to at the back, but if we've got serious concerns about car parking in the local area, should we not try to make cycling more attractive and therefore have a dedicated cycles parking space for the six residents there to try and get them out of their cars and into active modes of transport? Um, and just if this does go ahead, can we see a condition to have a better cycle storage um, for the application? Please, thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, Chris? Um, we currently don't have adopted space standards in planning. Um, I'll bring my colleague in in a bit from environmental health to see if um, if they've got specific standards that they look at when they're looking at these types of applications. In terms of space standards, I mean, this is something that we've raised with our policy section as something that we would like to introduce coming forward. We've um, we've previously seen a number of properties in the town centre, for example, in Neath, where they're trying to cram, you know, three or four flats in an area that we think is substandard, and we've pushed back on that. And what we've done is we've tried to look at the all wheel standards. We've looked at other standards that other authorities put in place. But it is something, um, and I would say that if any members think that this is an issue that needs to be looked at in more detail, um, whether through supplementary planning guidance um, or through a specific policy in the plan, 
then um, to you know to make that known to our policy section. But it is something that development management have raised with planning policy. Um, I'll I'll bring in um, Simon to um, comment on um, if he's got any information regarding the sizes in terms of what they look at. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Simon, would you like to come in, please? Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, yes, the um, issue is size and amenity standards for HMOs. Uh, we actually have an, um, a policy that was approved by members um, a number of years ago, uh, which sets out the minimum space standards for various types of rooms inside HMO dwellings. The actual minimum size for a um, single person bedroom in a HMO is actually only six and a half square meters. It's quite um, it's quite small. It would literally be something which would be a single bed and a perhaps a wardrobe and in a room. It's very small. The rooms in this uh, property all comfortably exceed that standard. Um, I, in fact, I'm from memory, but I'd have to go back and check. But I think there was wasn't a single room that was less than 10 square meters. The other things that were looked at with regard to this property is, as I said, amenity standards against the authorities adopted standards. And on uh, my initial recommendations was that there was insufficient bathroom provision in the original plans. Uh, they, I put forward two options for the developer, which was to provide additional bathrooms or reduce the number of bedrooms. And they've come back and they've um, provided amended plans with an additional WC downstairs and um, underneath the stairwell. So um, we have no concerns and that um, they are not meeting the authorities adopted amenity and space standards for this proposal. Uh, thank you, Simon. Um, Nathan, uh, Nathan would, like to, would like to reply. No, thank you for that um, feedback both. Uh, I take that all on board and just with the second question with regards to cycle storage. Um, sorry, I was you were talking then I realised I've got to say that. Yeah, they, they are providing cycle storage at the rear. Um, obviously, that would it would be a, it, that would be a reasonable location to provide it as it's a mid terrace property. Providing the cycle storage to the frontage would wouldn't wouldn't be appropriate. So having having access to the cycle storage at the rear, and I believe there is a condition that we've got on to make sure that they provide that as part of the development before the first use. Uh, thank you, Chris. Um, 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 in, in, in in the chamber, chamber councillor Suzanne, Suzanne Patterson. Patterson. Thank you very, thank much, you very Chair. much, Chair. Yeah. OK, thanks. Um, yeah, in in the chamber, we are uh, councillors, we are lay people. We do not have uh, professional knowledge of parking. So I'd like to ask a highways officer uh, about the comment that was made that the person didn't think you'd actually be able to get a, a, a parking in and out. So could I have a confirmation of that? Um, Chris? Yes, if you if you if you know from the plan that we showed, the car parking space is actually set back within the garden, and they have assessed it in terms of access. But if I can um, um, bring in bring in our colleague from Highways, then perhaps you can go through um, how this has been assessed and, and maybe yes, touch on you. the numbers as well and the parking standards. Thank you, um, Dallas. Good morning. Yes, we've assessed the application and. As they can provide a six metre offset, there's adequate room for a vehicle to be able to enter and degress from the site safely. They also have a 5.2 metre wide access, which they will be taking down the boundary wall in order to facilitate that. And they can safely accommodate the parking size within the site, including the six metre offset that is required. Um, Chris, if you wouldn't mind bringing up the plan that shows the um, parking arrangement, that might help the councillors to, to visualise what I'm trying to say. That's the one, yeah, with the parking. So you can, if, if you can see from the drawing, they're actually yeah. showing a parking space of 2.6 metres by 4.8 metres in length. And then from the back of that parking space, they have six metres to the boundary of the rear lane opposite. That gives them adequate room to enter and egress from the parking sa space safely. Okay, thank you. And I do have a supplementary as well. Uh, it's not supplementary, sorry, a, a different question. Um, the speaker um, did infer that the owners already started work 
And I think he said something around, it looks like they, they've they already had the nod that it'll go through. I just wanted to make a comment on that, that no decisions are ever made until um, the planning committee or the officers under delegated power um, make those decisions. And this is, you know, this is the way rumours start. And I just wanted to put it on record that when, when we sit in committee, the decisions are not made until the committee is meeting. Thank you. Thank you for that comment, Councillor Patterson. Uh, Chris? Um, yes, unfortunately, it's not uncommon for people to start work on things, um, but it is a residential property and internal work to residential property don't require planning permission. Um, it is the implementation of the use that requires plan permission in this case. So because it's a change of use through the changes that they made to class use class C to bring in different classes, um, if they were to occupy that as a HMO, so if they start using it, so they can do all of the internal work. None of that requires plan permission. Obviously, there's building control and other legislation and things. Um, but in terms of planning permission, until they actually use that property for use without plan permission, only then is there a breach of planning in place. So any works that they do up to this point or until they get approval are all at their own risk. Um, and obviously, if if an application is refused, um, there wouldn't be anything that we would do because there hasn't been a breach. But obviously, they have spent a lot of money on something that they can't use. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to make that clear because this is a public meeting and it was and people might get the wrong idea. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Councillor Patterson. Uh, could I bring in uh, Councillor Sarah Thomas? Sorry, I put my hand down. Councillor Patterson has already covered what I wanted to say. OK, thank you. Uh, so, uh, Councillor Carl Jordan. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my question uh, was going to be quite similar to what uh, Councillor Paddison said, really, regards the, the access egress and the size of the parking at the rear of the property. Um, it's been basically answered in uh, a few of the, the responses by Chris. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Jordan. Um, Councillor Cathy James, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, on a broader point, um, obviously for this, we've been looking at Swansea's guidance with regard to HMOs. Do we know, are we planning on introducing our own HMO guidance within the new um, LDP? Uh, thank you. Chris? Um, yes, that is the short answer. And I suppose the long answer is, um, at this time, we we're obviously aware of the issue. There are a number um, of differing issues with HMOs across the borough. Obviously, there's some areas that have um, HMOs that are predominantly occupied by students. Um, we have other issues where we've had um, historically issues with um, with with um, landlords of questionable behaviour, etc. Um, so, I mean, there's lots of different issues that have to be covered. So, we we have they currently pulling together all the evidence base as part of the review. We'll be looking at um, housing demand and housing need over the life of the um, the plan. And one of the things that we've looked at is how we address these issues, possibly in a similar way as Swansea have done. Um, but there may be specific zones that they've got policies in. We don't know. So it may be one policy that covers the whole of Neath Patal, but it may be specific policies that are marked on a plan as different zones where there's certain pressures. But it's certainly something we're looking at. It's also probably then going to extend out to other sections. So things like, um, as I said, parking permits, um, you know, they're, they're seeing um, issues rising with more intensive residential uses, with residential conversions on upper floors of properties in town centres and things. So they're about to review their standards as well. And some of the things they're going to be looking at is how do they deal with HMOs? Because currently, um, you know, as we said, there's certain rules they've got in place that you only get a permit for the road fronting your property. For example, you get X amount of permits per property plus a visitor's permit. So they're looking at the whole process and seeing how they can streamline it and address these issues. Because obviously um, what what you wouldn't want is to have um, planning approve an application with no parking, for example, and then them to be able to apply for six parking permits to park on the street. 
So it's trying to make sure that we're all aligned across all of the different sections of the authority. And I assume as we go through our LDP process as well, that we'll be bringing in our colleagues from highways to look at where the, where the existing parking guidance in terms of HMOs or other more intensive uses need to also be aligned to that policy as it emerges. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chris. Um, could I ask if there's any other questions of, of, of members before I bring in uh, the local member? Oh, uh, Councillor Chris James. Thank you, Chair. I just want to cover something that uh, when we were talking earlier about social cohesion, community cohesion, with the amount of HMOs in the area, there's something that hasn't been mentioned. And I just think the members need to be aware of. Uh, across the road, about 20, 30 metres, the other side of the road, is a guest house, which has been another one of my applications that I brought in front of the committee. Uh, which is currently being used to house homeless people. So it, although it's, it's, it is a guest house, it's actually acting as almost a HMO at the moment. And again, it's just adding to the air in just such, such a small space. You've got these ex, extra people, extra burdens on the local amenities. So I just want the members to be aware of that because that hasn't been mentioned at all in this meeting. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor James. Now moving on to the recommendation, which starts on page 28 of the report. And again, this application is stated as for approval. Can I have a proposer and a seconder to consider the recommendation? Thank you, thank you, Councillor Patson. Oh, I mean, oh, yeah. uh, seconder, please. Thank you, Councillor Kath. Oh, uh, Kathy James, is that, uh, is that a second yeah. or is it a yes, question? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on now, uh, on Chloe. Now, uh, Chloe. Okay, thank you. Could you please ask each member if they have been present for the whole of this item and how they wish to vote, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, so, Councillor Tim Bowen, have you been present for the whole item and how do you wish to vote? Councillor Tim Bowen, you're on mute. Yes, I have been present. Uh, I've had a couple of little glitches, but I have been able to hear the full conversations and I vote against. Thank you. Councillor Heath Davis, have you been present for the whole item and how do you wish to vote? Councillor Heath Davis? Councillor Davis, sorry, if sorry, you, are, sorry, you are on mute. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, right, sorry. Um, I can fix. Have you been present for the whole item and how do you wish to vote? I've been present and against it. Thank you, Councillor Rosalind Davis. Have you been present for the whole item and how do you wish to vote? I have been present for the whole item and I vote in favour of the Thank recommendation. You. Thank you. Councillor Nathan Goldup John, have you been present for the whole item and how do you wish to vote? I have been present for the whole item and I wish to abstain. Councillor Cathy James, have you been present for the whole item and how do you wish to vote? I've been present for the whole item and I wish to vote in favour of the officer's recommendations. Thank you. Chair, have you been present for the whole item and how do you wish to vote? Yes. Okay, thank you. Councillor Carl Jordan, have you been present for the whole item and how do you wish to vote? Yes, I have been present throughout the entire meeting and I wish to abstain from the decision on the recommendation. Thank you. We've had apologies from Councillor Dennis Keogh. Councillor Ridian Meisen, have you been present for the whole item and how do you wish to vote? I have been present for the whole item and I will vote for the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Suzanne Patterson, have you been present for the whole item and how do you wish to vote? Yes, I have been present and I wish to vote for approval. Thank you. We've also had apologies from Councillor Phil Rogers. 
And then finally, Councillor Sarah Thomas, have you been present for the whole item and how do you wish to vote? I have been present for the whole item and I support the uh, recommendation. Thank you, Chair. So that I can confirm that calculating those the, the total, six members voted for, two abstained and two voted against. So I can confirm that that recommendation has been approved. Thank you. Thank you. Now we move on to section B of the agenda, which is matters for information. Agenda items six and seven details the appeals determined and appeals received from the 11th of August 2023 to 4th of September 2023. As chair, I can confirm that we note the information contained with these, within these reports. The final item is agenda item eight, which is urgent items. I can confirm we have no urgent items today. There are no further items, so this ends the business for, for today. Thank you for all attending.